special meeting to review and approve contracts. Let's call this meeting to order. Uh, Mr. Handling, uh, resolution approving contracts, council review, resolution 70. R70 is an authorization for a contract or amendment under article 130.16. It's instructors at a police academy at a price of $5,300. Okay, thank you, sir. Mr. Approval Services, obviously police academy instructors. Any comments from my colleagues about R, uh, R70? Seeing none. Any comments from the public about R70? Seeing none. Mr. Hammond, call the vote in R70. Roll call vote, please. R70, Mr. Davis? Yes. Uh, Ms. Eichenwald? Yes. Mr. Glazer? Yes. Mr. Greedy? Yes. Mr. Hendricks? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. O'Connor? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Hammond. R71, approval of marketing services, digital fee marketing. R71 is the authorization for a contract or amendment under Article 130.16. It's approval for marketing services from Digital Feast Marketing at a price of $5,000. Thank you, sir. Digital Feast is a local company, am I correct? <coughs> it is. Okay, thank you. Any comments from my colleagues? Ms. Yes. Um, since this involves a company, how can we be sure that the bidding process was followed correctly? In lieu, and of course, my remarks have to do in lieu of what we now are aware of that transpired today. I mean, it didn't happen today, but that it was released today. Could you, inter yeah, good question, Ms. Eichel. Introduce yourself in the class. <coughs> they get mad when we don't have our names attached to faces. Hi, my name is Becky Ann Stroll. I'm a purchasing agent for the city of Allentown. Uh, and your position? Purchasing, purchasing agent. agent. Pur purchasing agent, yes, ma'am. Um, this particular service was $5,000. This is just an engagement of professional service. This is not an actual contract. Um, the ordinance requires that all engagements of professional services be brought forth in front of city council. This is $5,000. The threshold, um, anything under 10, but over four, requires two competitive quotes, and there was another competitive quote received for these services. But my question is, how can we be assured that this process was followed, that there is no fraud in this process. Fraud to, to what end? I mean, well, of course I'm going to compare everything to what happened with Northeast Revenue. Right, I mean, I need, I, I'd like to have some assurance that, you know, this was followed, that this was advertised, et cetera, et cetera. Ms. Hartzell, Ms. Hartzell, I'd like to say this once. <laughs> I appreciate Ms. Eichenwald's concerns about what had happened before and all the comments that have been described about it tonight. Um, under my leadership and under Ms. Stroll's highly capable leadership as purchasing agent, we are adhering to everything to the letter that you have authorized already existing inside of the purchasing statutes, ordinances, <clears throat> regulations, and especially. Uh, as was pretty obvious with what was provided to you at the first session, what we, what you had wanted to pass on Bill 39. We are rigorous in our adherence to that. Um, I, I just have one more point of information, Mr. Hartzler. I appreciate that response. So every contract that will now be presented will be under your tenure. There is nothing here left under the old tenure. That or is before correct. you came when there was that time when there was no one in that office. That is correct. Uh, Thank you. And uh, a good follow-up is that we approved every, the last um, last week, November 23rd, I think we did about 13 or 14, and some were, some were $450 for the bands in Chuck's Middle School. So we're we're approving them all, no matter how large, how slight, the whole bit, correct? 
Absolutely. We are giving to council as we understand and we have spoken with Mr. Hanlon about it to make sure that we're all in agreement is that everything that is to come before council uh, as a result of uh, Bill 39 and that ordinance is brought before you. And that was an ordinance that Ms. Eichelwald uh, introduced and Mr. Garidi second and it was unanimous, unanimously approved. So we're following the letter of the intent of the ordinance. Correct or incorrect? Yes, Mr. President, we are. Thank you, Mr. Hartzell. Any other comments by my colleagues? Just <coughs> Mr. Mr. Brady. <coughs> Mr. Hartzell, it is a contract. This is a total amount, and it, there won't be any, I mean, it's an engagement. Does that mean that this is the not to exceed in the engagement, or is it, uh, would, it would it be coming in the future back to us and we need to add any additional funds uh, into it? This is not a contract, this is just an engagement of professional services. So anything above $4,999.99 up to $10,000 requires two competitive quotes. This company was the awarded vendor. They did also, I say they, meaning um, CD um, Community Development. This is their contract, their engagement. They did go out and obtain another, what we would consider a no bid. They received a no response. I'm sorry, is your microphone on? I, I, I talk very softly, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I have a hard time hearing you, I'm sorry. Um, where do you need me to continue? Right, just continue saying what you said. Okay. Um, they did get two competitive quotes. Technically, they're covered up to ten thousand dollars. If they would go over okay. ten, then they would have been required to get three quotes. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Thank you. So it's five thousand dollars, but it could be up to ten. It shouldn't be. No. They, they got a, a <coughs> quote for five thousand dollars. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Grady. Mr. Glazer. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, if we could just be informed of uh, which departmental budget and what account um, this will be paid out of. It's a community and economic development. Um, this will be an account of 46 cents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, professional services account for Professional it. services are going to be in Department 9, and I think it is probably Bureau 901, which is the main director's office for community and economic development. I expect that that's the one. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Glazier. Any other comments from my, from my colleagues? Seeing none, any comments from the public? Mr. Epping, you're welcome. <coughs> Yeah, Ken Evans, Jr. 733 North 11th Street. I'm all by with digital piece. I actually met the people that run it. They're, you know, good. The commercials are good, but now you just, I was actually curious who was paying for this, and you said with CDC, which is the city of Allentown, 90% um, of the commercials that have come out, though, are, are a NISDA, as it is. So, you know, I mean, it's fine that we, we're showing off the section of the city, but there's a lot more in the city than just that. So if this is paid for, this you know, if this is being paid for the city of Allentown, this should be representing the entire city, not just particularly one section. If this goes particularly <coughs> one section, then let's try to miss it with the bill. Thank you. Well, it might be an assumption that's being made, but go ahead, Mr. Hartzell. If I may, I, I'm not sure if I quite understood where Mr. Hayden <coughs> Traeger was going with this. It indeed is a city of Allentown function, and just because it happens to be in the community and economic development department doesn't make it just specifically that. That just is the logical place from which to make this expenditure in that part of the budget. Thank you, sir. Any other comments from the public about R71? Seeing no, Mr. Hammond, call roll, roll call vote. Okay, on the digital feast uh, uh, service. Uh, Ms. Eichelow? Yes. Mr. Glazier? Yes. Mr. Grady? Yes. 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 Work bits are paid at $17.50 a game. Timekeepers and hall monitors, $15 a game. The uh, cost estimate, total cost estimate for 2016 is $13,000. <coughs> uh, and the rest of the 15 is $7,000. And the total winter season um, the estimate is $20,500. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. I'm sorry, what was the total? 20500 $20, 
part of the 7,500 for part of December season, and then we go into January, February, March until the basketball season ends. <clears throat> and then that cost us 13,000 for a total of 20,500. And this is our, our winter leagues, uh, basketball. Uh, are, are numbers up? Do we have do we have numbers up in our winter leagues for the basketball? Yes. What's that? 14, 14. Fantastic, fantastic. <clears throat> That's good. It's always a good time to go and watch the the, the, the youth. That some obviously these are the kids who don't make the high school teams. They have somewhere to play in the winter, and that's great. We want to keep the kids off the street, and we're doing that, getting them involved. Any other comments from my colleagues? I've said enough. Seeing none. Any comments from the public? Seeing none. Mr. Hallam, call a vote on R72, please. Okay, Mr. Glazer. Yes. Mr. Greedy. Yes. 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 <coughs> okay, thank you, Mr. Hanlon. R73, approval of the service contract, waste management. Go ahead, sir. R73 approves the uh, waste management proposal. Okay. <coughs> Messenger, welcome. Solomon, welcome. Who's going to take this? Thank you. Good evening. Ms. Sara, go ahead. Give us one moment until uh, Mr. Hanlon pulls up a PowerPoint, please. Thank you, that's Gabrielle Heine, our office manager, indispensable. <laughs> okay, Ms. Solomon, ready to go? All right, thank you. Good evening, Council. Um, we want to start with um, the next slide, please. Um, RPP 2015-24, the um, City of Allentown put out an RFP for municipal solid waste and recyclables collection, disposal and related services. Uh, this, uh, we're coming to the end of the current contract uh, with uh, a nine-year contract that's due to end June 4th, so this one will pick up right away the next day on June 5th, 2016. Um, it is partially budgeted it, for the first five months under the old contract in 2016's budget and then seven months under the new proposed options uh, that were selected by the city and if approved by council this evening. Um, we asked for both uh, pricing and proposals for a five-year base contract with extension years of, of four years till nine total and also a seven-year base contract um, with two contract year extensions also for a total of nine. Um, we are asking City Council for um, the acceptance of the five-year base term with four one-year extensions with the city's sole and absolute discretion to um, accept those extension options. We, re we received five proposals. They are from Advanced Disposal, County Waste, FCC, JP Mascaro and Son, and Waste Management. The uh, City Evaluation Committee and our consultants uh, reviewed and evaluated the first the technical proposals and shortlisted three proposers based on the evaluations. And the three that moved forward were FCC, Mascaro, and Waste Management. Uh, then um, the cost proposals were opened and the Evaluation Committee and the consultant um, evaluated those proposals as well. Of the three shortlisted proposals, the city is recommending Waste Management of Pennsylvania as the lowest qualified and responsible proposer for the options selected by the city and the options we are recommending, which we're gonna go into a little bit more detail, 
would be to continue with twice a week trash collection services and single stream recycling. One of the most important things that we feel, um, we've gotten great strides over the last uh, several years to uh, clean up the city. Um, and we really don't want to go backwards with having, um, doing collection practices or doing things with once a week for, that might cause various hardships for people, storage issues on properties, additional litter on sidewalks, uh, potentially from the larger amounts of trash being out there on a single night. Um, and we feel the cleanliness, we, we put this in the front because we do feel cleanliness is one of the most important um, for citywide for continued economic development and for better neighborhoods. Evaluating the pros and cons of twice a week versus once a week um, for the residents, the nights of collection will stay the same versus once a week we would have to change that. Um, everybody in the city would probably end up with new collection <coughs> nights going five nights a week. <coughs> Um, there's no change in the current routes. We can roll right through and right in as opposed to redrawing them. Um, we keep the current trash limits of five bags of trash per collection night. Again, if we were to do once a week trash collection, we would have double the amount out. In particular, um, in row homes and multifamily dwellings where um, potentially a four unit residents could have 40 bags of trash out on the sidewalk on one collection evening. Uh, we 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 felt that that was not advantageous to the city's um, continued cleanliness, and um, there's minimal cost difference between twice a week and once a week. And the value that uh, we see in the cleanliness of the city was worth the little bit extra money per household uh, that we uh, will pay, and that's why we are recommending to continue with twice a week trash collection. Um, when I said that we've taken some steps to improve the cleanliness of Highland Town, here's some two numbers just over the last uh, 2014 and year to date regarding improper storage, trash cleanouts, littered properties, and illegal dumpings. This is um, Tom Harper and the sweep officers, his team out there enforcing uh, property maintenance to keep properties clean to at property owners, landlords, tenants to get everybody on board uh, for a cleaner Allentown. So, Again, um, you can see even between last year and this year, the increases that we've made uh, in attacking these problems, and um, we do, don't want to backslide as a, as a result. Under the uh, new contract, one of the things that we did uh, specifically different in this new RFP and the proposal that we are putting forward is to pay actually on the per tons that the city of Allentown will be disposing. Under the current contract, we are paying a flat fee for the 42,000 tons disposed annually, whether we reach that or go over that. And as the next slide will indicate, um, you're gonna see the trends, but um, the new contract that we're proposing, and we asked for pricing for a per ton cost, so we will pay on actual. The other thing that with the increase in recycling, which we are anticipating, um, will be avoided landfill costs. So those tons that we recycle, we're not paying to landfill, netting an overall disposal savings. This is our NSW historical trends dating back to um, the last, uh, even before the last contract. And you can see from 2003 to 2006, um, our historical tonnage was 41,000 with a high of over 46,000 tons per year. Um, in 2005 is when we instituted the trash limits. Uh, we had lots of landlords bringing in trash from outside of Allentown and dumping it on city streets. Uh, again, with our sweep, depart, sweep program being um, attacking these problems head on, and our tonnage has come down considerably over time. Um, there's also economic trends that have impacted this as well, but you can see really how advantageous it would be for the city to pay on actual tons disposed as opposed to a flat fee. Um, this is our recommendation to go from dual stream to single stream recycling. Uh, currently residents, um, as you know, put the cans and bottles in the green, paper in the blue. They will be, uh, right now, allowed to do all together in either one. 
we made huge investments in the recycling bins that everybody has in their homes and we may transition over time into a new color or something more specific but we invested a lot of money to get the residents the bins that they have now uh, it's not economical for me just to throw them away and start over so we're going to transition over time and we're going to be researching that and keeping you in the loop on that but we do estimate the first year collection cost savings of $587,000 um, between dual stream and single stream recycling and the collection alone. Um, wanted to just uh, show you some figures regarding our recycling curbside tonnage. Uh, you can see that um, our mixed paper and uh, curbside commingled, we have seen increases um, although minor in <coughs> recycling, but most importantly, you have to also understand um, economic trends that have happened. The light weighting of packaging, <coughs> not many things are made in heavier glass anymore. Lots of things are in plastic, and even plastic bottles themselves have been light weighted. It's cheaper on shipping for, for manufacturers and things like that. Um, so we, as our population has grown and as the economy has taken a dive and recycling has changed, we still feel we've been managing to make headway in our recycling program and uh, with the tonnages that you see there. Um, the revenue, the council asked me about that last time when I was here last week. So I wanted to show you the historical um, revenue, which is including the drop-off center material, uh, which will be part of the new RFP. Um, but you can even see the fluctuations in revenue over time based on the economy there and markets. With the benefits of single stream recycling um, nationwide, uh, has shown that it has, has increased participation. Residents, you know, we plan a whole new marketing uh, strategy to unveil this, that the residents will um, hopefully be excited about something new that we can offer to them. Um, we anticipate the increase of recycling as well, which will also, again, give us the avoided landfill disposal costs. Um, by having a single stream collection program instead of um, routes for both the green bin collection and blue bin collection, this will actually reduce the number of trucks on the route during collection. <coughs> Therefore, it decreases labor and fuel cost, and uh, which we saw in the proposal as well as um, which should decrease miscollections collections as well because there's less opportunity for miss. Part of the proposal that waste management uh, offered is also value added services, the continuation of our big belly solar trash and recycling compactor program. Um, there's roughly uh, 225 uh, big bellies out there at the moment. Um, the value added service of free disposal for trash from litter receptacles and city facilities. Uh, this is something that they put in. We estimate about 2,500 tons annually uh, that is collected from our litter baskets in the parks around the city sidewalks and streets and from City Hall and other satellite offices. And this is going to be at no charge to the uh, residents of Allentown and as well. Um, waste management has stated in their proposal that they are going to use trucks with compressed natural gas vehicles. Um, this is also trending, very popular. Waste management has a huge investment in this type of vehicle because it's much quieter on the routes, emissions. Um, studies have shown that it is very good on emissions and um, it's offering um, a better green footprint for the city of Allentown. Um, they also offered a Recycle Bank, which is an incentive-based uh, computer rewards program for the residents of Allentown. And this is quite interesting. Um, recycle Bank helps the residents by, the more they recycle, they can go online and register and get coupons back to cash in at local grocery stores, restaurants. It supports the local economy. And I believe it's up to $200 a year in coupons that people can get back. So when you're looking at a $375 trash and recycling fee, but you can make that back just by recycling up to $200, I think that's a huge win for the city of Allentown. Um, it's an incentive-based, route-based program. 
So as the truck is going through collecting, everybody collected on that route that has signed up online and registered, that gets divided up and you get the rewards and the points for recycling. So it encourages your neighbors to recycle, talk to your neighbors about doing this and thereby increasing recycling. Between single stream and recycle bank, we're estimating and, and hoping for a 10 to 20% increase in recycling. All that being said, we are recommending to City Council for the twice a week trash collection, <coughs> single stream recycling, and we do feel this is the best plan moving forward for the City of Allentown. And we'll open up to questions. Thank you, Ms. Arnold. Okay, thank you, Ms. Arnold. Mr. Messner, you're welcome. Mr. Green, you can start. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I would like to say kudos to you. You've been, made a great presentation and you do a wonderful job. Um, and I think, uh, you know, with the recycling department is one that uh, we can feel very proud of since we started our program and it's doing very well. And I think it even has gotten awards from, from uh, uh, some governmental agencies, right? Yes, both uh, statewide and national. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, presentation was great. I, I love the, uh, <coughs> presentation and as well I, I think the, the only concern that I have is in regards to the, the single stream and, and I, I understand that you save money and there's a lot of incentive to go with single stream my question is and I'm saying this on the auspices basically of what's going on in the world today where there's a, a conference, especially, I mean, right now as we are speaking, going on in Paris in regards to the um, environment. And, and I'm one of those people who is very forward and, and um, very proactive in uh, recycling myself in my house and, and, um, and, and like to continue with that. The part of the single stream, what worries me the most is we will be sure that if we do a single stream as opposed to a dual stream that we do now, this um, material is going to be not going to a landfill and bury on the, our, our uh, 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 ground. Uh, well, first of all, uh, all the recyclables will still be hauled over to uh, the yard waste site. So there will still be union employees that will be delivering that uh, to the recycling centers. So we can tell you that that is not going to be going into a landfill. We'll be taking it there ourselves. Uh, we'll be uh, documented weight slips that we get from the from the companies. And uh, obviously that's what they're going to be paying for us for. So for them to then put it into a landfill, I think would be a, a big misjustice at that point. Right. Obviously we, we can only take it to a certain point. What somebody does with that after that, I mean, we, we can't control. Uh, but obviously we're working with licensed uh, landfills so uh, you know if, if there was a landfill that was unlicensed and they were following the rules they were breaking the rules it was something that wasn't going to be allowed through this RFP process well, but also I'd, I'd like to point out too uh, that uh, I mean we're, we're not the first one in the area to go through this uh, there was a sheet that we uh, gave to Mike Hanlon uh, this afternoon uh, just basically stating tw uh, basically about 12 areas local local areas here uh, anywhere from Bethlehem, East End, Emmaus, McCungy, Lancaster, Reading, South Whitehall, and everybody else. At, at that point in time, basically, at this point, if we go single stream, there's only two areas anymore that are dual stream. Everybody is going that way. Everybody is looking towards what, what, what is best for it. And uh, not only, like I said, looking at the cost, but looking at the amount of recycling we're, we're projecting that we'll be able to increase again that keeps more items out of the landfill well, let me help me to understand the process then because um, i've heard some horror stories of what happens when you put in it's you go into single stream as opposed to dual stream and exactly what they do once you uh, uh, pack this material together sometimes they just put in, in line fields and I'm, I'm i'm concerned about that waste management um I understand it's a great company, and, and I, I can say from personal experience that it's, it's, uh, has been a great improvement since we got them uh, as opposed to what we had before. And, and um, However, they also own the landfill, right? Now, 
the only landfill of it. And how, what I want to know is, I'm not saying that it's a bad thing. What I want to make sure is that you can assure us that these materials are separate. I mean, you put in cardboards and, and, and plastic and, and somebody has to separate them. Are you saying that our union um, uh, employees are going to separate them? Uh, the, uh, the, uh, who's going to separate them? <coughs> and how are we assured that they are going to be separated? And how are we assured that they're not going to be? I mean, when you said we put it, we send them and there's nothing we can do about it, we can do something about it. That's what I'm asking about it. We can do something about it right now. Sure. And so we, you know, the, uh, let me just finish this point. The point that once you put it in the truck and you can't do anything about it, really worries me more than before. We got to make sure that we do something about it. And we got to make sure that we use this type of contract to assure us and that we can verify that it is not being put into the landfill in Penardio or somewhere else. The, as uh, Craig stated, all of the contracts, what, all of the collection routes currently, the green bin and the blue bin, and it will continue the same way. It's just combined in one truck saving us collection costs I understand are that. being delivered. It is a, um, we, it's called, there's a section in the contract called liquidated damages that states if they landfill our recyclable materials, it's a breach of contract, or we can, damages that we can go after, it, it's a huge deal. We do not take that lightly. And even in the RFP for our recyclable materials processing that's going out, that will also be in there, that our materials cannot be landfilled other than the contamination as a result of processing. Because the next step of processing is big conveyor belt systems that sort out the cans from the paper, from the plastics, <coughs> and even within whatever type of plastic, it's all automated. You know, we're going to be delivering it to a facility like that that is going to take the materials, divide them up by what they're made out of, and then market them. And, and that's the way it will work. Okay. I just want to make sure that when somebody's watching this, you know, that we're that. You know, and through the contract, we can do that. I mean, and I just, I mean, I'm taking your word for it, but I also want to make sure that you, you know, like you go on record saying that it's going to be watched and that somebody is not going to just put all these things together and put them into the landfill as some of the horror stories I have heard in the past. Okay? Uh, we will be watching. And I just want to thank you for your candidates and the, uh, the, the, the presentation again. Um, uh, you're welcome, Mr. Green. Here's my question. My question is about the process. Okay. My question, and this was an RFP, request for a proposal. And I saw you had five, yes. you narrowed it down to three, and you went with one. Was this, was this RFP awarded to the lowest responsible company? Yes. It was. And obviously, we, according, we cannot divulge numbers until after the favorable vote or non favorable vote of the of the other companies. Correct. That's correct. That is correct. Okay. Um, I'm I'm still hung up on the single stream, double stream. Okay. Uh, and I just there's no guarantees in life. Okay. But you, if we go to single stream, if we go to single stream, we're going to save five hundred ninety-seven thousand dollars the first year. I, I heard numbers from last week. Go ahead. That's just the uh, collection cost of it, yes. Okay, so let's round it off to 600000 So over five years, we're going to save $3 million going from double stream to single stream. That's what you're telling me? Yes. And uh, if we would stay with the double stream, I had heard a number out there that it might go up per household around $17 per household. That's for trash twice a week. For trash twice a week. A week. It's $16. Okay, $16, okay. Um, okay, I'm, I'm okay right now. I might come back to some more questions, but any, any other? Mr. Hendricks, go ahead. Yes, Ms. Sauerman, I have a question. You say that you monitor them where, you, where, where it's delivered, city personnel? Yes. Who else monitors them? What federal, would that be the DEP? Um, Do you know to what extent their monitoring is? Well, the DEP would monitor the landfills. They do spot inspections of trucks coming into the landfills that they have to show their documentation, their load. Um, it's prohibited to have a certain percentage of recyclable material on the truck. Um, it, it can't be greater than 
um, and it could certainly in some of the processes <coughs> I talked about in contamination, there, there are mixed things, but DEP would actually inspect the trucks going to landfills. Our staff does the acceptance of the um, material at our yardway site at Oxford Drive and Pitch Hatchery Road. We have a weight scale <coughs> there that um, every truck that comes in there is weighed, um, fully loaded, they offload into our building, and then they weigh empty so that we can determine the weight of material coming in. Um, and the other good eyes are the people on the streets, the residents of the city of Allentown, which is why in the contract we label our trucks. We actually say recyclable material, it's required because people watch what they do. And the first time you see a recycling bin going in the back of a trash truck, I'll be getting a phone call. And that would be my other um, way of monitoring them. Okay. And do you have uh, any way, that you have, uh, are you in contact with the EP on a regular basis for any reason? Um, not on a regular basis, as more as needed with grants and things like that. We're um, a required municipality. We're mandated by Act 101 to have a curbside recycling program. And um, that has information has to be turned into the county in the beginning of the year of the previous year recycling. And then we do our 904 performance grant by September 30th. We turn that in. And um, then that's one of our grant revenue lines that you see in the budget. Um, and then uh, in order for me to qualify for those grants, I have to meet certain requirements, such as have a, a litter enforcement program, an illegal dumping, a no burn ordinance. So there's requirements that we have to have in order to even receive the grant money. So the DEP connection is kind of ongoing as the reporting and um, other things require. Okay, and one other question, that chart you had sent to us earlier today, I believe there were a total of nine communities yes. in the immediate area that were <clears throat> going, dealing with single stream yes. versus only two that have now gone in, or Are two remaining these. remaining as dual. Separate. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Ms. Hendricks. Ms. Eichelwald? Um, thank you, Mr. President. Um, my questions have more to do with the bidding process. All right. Um, I certainly appreciate all of the information. As usual, it was clear and concise, but very little was told to us about the bidding process itself. And I see Attorney Fox is here representing Ms. Scarrow, and he can certainly speak for himself. Um, but I understand that there were some issues in the RFP presentation itself, that rather than asking for a total amount of the contract, originally when the RFP was issued, it was to choose the service provider and then would be negotiated a price. Is that correct? No. So can you explain a little bit um, about how the RFP process, I mean, I'd like some information because that was glossed over in Ms. Sauerman's original presentation. For an RFP process, RFPs are used for more complex solicitations, obviously, as a use your, use, I'm sorry, I don't want people to use, 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 <laughs> your, use, your, use your strong voice. Okay. Okay. Everyone is listening. Okay. Strong voice. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, RFPs are used for more complex solicitations, obviously, which this is, this is a $10 million a year contract. Um, what I can tell you we do is that the, the departments themselves are required to submit a project information form in their specs to purchasing. I was a consultant involved in this through drafting the specifications. I advertised, publicly advertised, this RFP. There, we, as part of the RFP process, we require separate technical and cost proposals. We opened the technical proposals on October 15th. And then at that point, what we do is we read the names of the respondents. So I believe there were six, five, five, I'm sorry, five that submitted uh, proposals. We opened the technical, read the names in front of the city controller's office. We put the cost proposals unopened to the side. We do not open cost proposals during an RFP. After the technical evaluations were submitted by Recycling and Solid Waste, we scheduled the cost opening again in front of the city controller's office. We opened the cost proposals. We do not read the cost during the RFP process. We deliver the cost proposals to Recycling and Solid Waste where they completed their evaluation. 
and they recommended an award. And then obviously we awarded continuing. And at one point, are the, uh, are the cost proposals opened and who was there and who makes the determination? The cost proposals are opened by purchasing in front of the city controller's office after we receive the technical evaluations. So you were present when the cost proposals were opened? The cost proposals were opened on October 19th. Yes, I was present. We do not read the cost. We just read the names. To basically, what we're doing is we're confirming that we didn't accept any proposals after the technical was opened. And are those amounts available to the public? They are confidential pre-award. And once the award is made, they are then they can then available be to the right to <coughs> yes, they're available through the right to know process. And is that standard process or yes for a right to No no excuse me. Excuse me, Mr. Fox. You will have your time. I didn't say anything. Well you, you come on. I didn't laugh, this guy beside me. <laughs> if you're telling jokes, let us all hear it, okay? <laughs> Okay. okay, so let me continue. So that is standard process. Or they request for proposals, yes. Okay. All right, thank you. I'll wait to hear what Attorney Fox has to say. Thank you. Oh, uh, okay. Ms. Eichel, you finished? Yeah. Okay, Ms. Yes, Pickering, go ahead. I just want to point out, mm -hmm. one of our mentioned that there are two different uh, practices. One is for proposals, and then when there's a proposal, the, the, you don't just read the, uh, the, the award in public. That's only it's done for the uh, for the um, the bidding uh, uh, public bidding kind of thing. Yes, we have okay. an invitation to bid an ITB, yeah. which is a competitive bid. Competitive those numbers, bid, yeah. those numbers are read. The prices are opened at the same yeah, time. They're open at the same time. Everybody's there, and they read the uh, the, the lowest bidder, not the lowest bidder, the right. lowest responsible bidder. Yes. And the proposal is different, where you kind of negotiating uh, things, not necessarily with the actual proposal but you you do a proposal because there are other things besides just work right you, you want to look at something other than lowest cost yes. correct exactly um, i just like to say one thing um when i was on the school board and mr Fraser can certainly attest to that when we after the rfp and and was given and we're down now to the cost all right as um allentown school district board members we would receive a sheet of paper that would list all of those companies that had put in a bid with the amounts, and the one that was chosen was circled. All right, if it was the lowest bid, it was understood. Sometimes it would not be the lowest bid because there was a technical issue. So how is that different from what we're doing now? Why are we not allowed to see what all of the amounts are in a municipal RFP process, well, when you are, process. You are, I did not receive any requests for copies of the additional documents. But you said that we couldn't see it until it was awarded. No, I said they weren't public until it was awarded. An award contingent upon council approval was drafted. But at the city council meetings, that was a public discussion. It was part of every meeting. It was public at the school board meetings. I mean, there could be a different process for municipal <laughs> Contract. That's what my question is. Because obviously the new ordinance is going to be an adjustment, I think, for everyone. The award was made contingent on council approval on October 30th. Um, I have forwarded copies of the required documents up to the solicitor's office for right to knows that I have received. I have not said that they are not releasable because of you know an award not being made. So in other words, if someone <coughs> files a right to know, they could be given those amounts. That has to be determined. Not to last two After. After. Two. Two. I, I mean, I, I, and I, I, I understand. I know exactly what Ms. Eichel was saying. I think I do. There's a difference between an actual bid and a proposal. Correct. Is it? I mean, this is a, this was an RFP, a proposal. This wasn't a bid. Contract, am I right? This was not an invitation to bid. This was exactly. a it's not an invitation to bid, and in most of the school district business, business it was an invitation to bid. Where this was an RFP, so that's the that's the apples and oranges right there. Okay, and I, let me let me go back. I, I owe Mr. Fox an apology. I should call you Attorney Fox. So yeah, I, I apologize for that. Go ahead, Mr. Reedy. Go ahead. Just just other point of clarification. Although. That you open it. Uh, did you also open, or are you obligated to open the the other uh, envelopes on the the cost for the other one? We do not. Board? So they all uh, they all will be open. I'm uh, sorry, yes. solicitor. I can't hear. Her. Okay, I can't. Right, get close to the mic. Go ahead. 
My answer was that not until after the technical proposals are reviewed do they have to open the call. And, the, and as Ms. Stroll has indicated, they don't, don't even open the cost proposals until after the technical proposals are reviewed. Okay. So then you don't, I mean, you don't open them before all of them? No. So do they send it to us in a sealed envelope? I get separate sealed technical and cost proposals, yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, Mr. Creedy. Okay. Uh, Mr. Hendricks, go ahead. Just a quick question. Mr. Hartzell, were you part of this process from beginning then? I arrived in September and uh, I was not one of the selection, in, I was not an individual in the RFP selection team. Uh, but I, uh, as I said a little while ago, with respect to uh, Ms. Eichenwald's question, um, Ms. Stroll and her team and our entire department are very rigorous in ensuring that if it's an RFP, we follow the provisions of the RFP as they are stated in the laws and regulations. And she was absolutely on target in what she did to adhere to that through the entire process. Thank you. And Ms. Hendricks? Ms. Eichel, go ahead. I just have one question. Um, when we last discussed this, there was a consulting company that was involved? Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, the consultants were are GBB, Gershman, <coughs> Brechter, and Britton. They're from Virginia. And um, Bob Brechter is the uh, consultant, and the vice president, Terry Schweitzer, are the two that consulted um, on the RFP with us. And who was present at the opening of the final evaluation? For the technical? For for the technical proposal, I was out on maternity leave. One of my buyers actually opened the technical proposals. Um, the city controller was also there in attendance at the opening. Um, they are in attendance at all of our openings. And I believe uh, Craig and Ann were also at the opening, and Gabrielle was there as well. That was the technical opening. And then for the cost, I opened the cost I returned on, on October 19th. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Eckel. Any other comments, Mr. Glazier? Thank you, Mr. President. Um, how long has Allentown had um, the dual stream recycling? Uh, we started with the green bin program in 1990, and I believe it was approximately 1997 when we added the blue bin. Um, but, um, I could be wrong on that date. So when we started the green bin, what we took was cans, we didn't take paper. <laughs> That's correct. The DEP Act 101 law required uh, selection of certain materials to start with. So Allentown started with glass, the three different colors, cans. We added plastic. I think it was actually plastic we added in 97 and paper in 2002, I believe it. And uh, the program has grown over the years? It has, yes. And um, I take it that the Royal We are very proud of, of, of the program? We are. Um, I think the last time you spoke um, uh, about the price of um, the recyclables, um, tell us a little bit about going forward, how that's, how we're gonna be paid for that and how that, that market price will, or how the, the price that we get will be determined. The, um, current contract that we have um, it started for the I'm talking about the green bin cans and bottles uh, started in 1993 with Todd Heller Incorporated um, and he's located in Northampton it was bought out by Green Star uh, which is an international company and it's been most recently Green Star was bought out by waste management that contract is coming to an end uh, December 31st 2015 the pricing structure for that initially was uh, the city received $10 per ton. Over time, it went up to $12 per ton and is currently $14 per ton. Um, the second contract that we have is with Liberty Recycling of Allentown, PA. We're uh, coming to the end of that contract, June 4th, 2016. And um, they receive our blue bin paper um, and cardboard that's mixed at the curb. 
and both Green Star Waste Management and Liberty receive various materials from our drop-off center. Um, the bailed cardboard, the uh, separated newspaper, mixed paper, et cetera. Uh, so all that in total in the sale of those materials make up our recycling revenue, which was on the one slide. The um, markets most recently, and we've had meetings with Liberty Recycling of Allentown, who have also talked about distressed markets and the ability to sell even good clean paper, and I'm sure Mr. Keschel might be coming up at some point to talk about that. Um, you know, he's seen a, a decline in value. Um, we negotiated the stopgap time measure between January 1st and June 4th with uh, Green Star Waste Management to accept our materials. And um, when we talked with them, this would be a fourth amendment to that contract. Um, you know, they weren't even willing to give us two dollars a ton, but they said they will accept it for zero. And right now, they're charging customers twenty-five dollars without contracts, twenty-five dollars a ton for single stream. So the markets uh, really um, have been in trouble for several years now. Um, regardless, we're still mandated to do recycling by DEP. But what we are seeing and what we will be proposing in the next RFP, which will take us from June 5th again, and we'll match it to our collection contract as far as the term, um, is uh, we're going to be asking for a um, business model. The business model will show if there's any processing costs, if revenue sharing ideas based on markets, and if there's any type of um, disposal for contamination that's mixed in. Again, this is an RFP that we already have shortlisted because we did an RFQ back in April of this year uh, to request um, um, who, who in the area can accept our material and we have a short list of vendors for that. So we'll be presenting that RFP to these interested parties to hopefully get, again, the best deal to inch out every penny we can um, in revenue for this. Um, this is the way that the trending is going based on um, information I received at conferences and that. Um, because the, the processors, they wanna keep processing the materials that the, the, where it talked about um, the mechanical um, separation of the cans and bottles and all of that processing costs. Um, education is so important in this process to um, only put in the materials we're asking to keep our contamination low. We'll have to do like spot checks to um, assess our waste stream and our recycling stream because we want to be assured, you know, Allentown, if we're doing our part, we want to make sure we're getting the best market rate possible. So the RFP that should be coming out, um, hopefully it's this time in December, and we'll be getting some responses back and again go through this contract process with you before City Council. Thank you very much. Well, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, quick. I may have a couple no, more. No, that, that's fine, go ahead. So to clarify, what's in front of us really doesn't um, cover the revenue and or cost of the recycled stream, it really covers the collection. Correct. Um, so if, um, if council and it, uh, felt that they really rather stay with the dual stream, would the, uh, the same vendor still be the low bidder? Yes. Okay. Um, the 904 grants you spoke about, um, uh, do they differentiate between single stream and dual stream? In, uh, in the kind of money that you the get? dollars, it's just the reporting of it. Okay. Um, <laughs> we spoke about the Recycle Bank uh, as a program that Waste Manager would, um, would offer. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, the, the purpose of that is to encourage people to recycle. Yes. Okay. So that could be just as effective in a dual stream system as in a single stream system? In terms yes. of getting folks, okay. Um, yeah, and if we stayed with a dual stream, then uh, you'd need to negotiate with two vendors, 
one for paper and, and one for cans and bottles. And in the request for qualifications, we asked whether or not they could accept both dual and single stream because we didn't know at that time. Right. So we already had responses from the, uh, uh, the shortlisted people on that. I believe they all. Um, there is, I think the other point of clarification is we also include um, recyclables from the drop-off center. Um, we're going to be looking at um, paper shredding because we got grant money to buy a, a paper shredder and a baler. Um, so that has to be uh, marketed. So there's a, more components in that, but um, um, your original question about whether or not uh, that would impact the, the uh, if the dual stream would impact whether you needed more than one vendor. Well, that was the most recent question we had. In the, that RFP will allow us to award to one or more vendors. Um, at the recycling centers, you're still going to be still going to be dual stream. Even, even if the contract, the larger contract, is for single stream. The, no, it could be three, four different vendors. If uh, if we get. Yeah, I, I, I understand that. I, I can understand that. But when we have, when, when citizens drop off at the recycling center, yes, they're not going to co-mingle their recyclables. No. That'll still be dual stream or three stream or five stream or whatever it is. Okay, I get that. Um, part of um, the situation we find ourselves in is, is driven by market forces. I mean, if China, if China was still going you know, a million miles a minute and commodity prices were higher, then um, we might not be having this discussion in terms of looking at a, s a single stream. Uh, you're, you're correct with that, but it's also the uh, uh, prices for petroleum right now. Uh, they're to the point now where uh, making new plastics, uh, making new instead of recycling is actually uh, more cost effective. And uh, so in, in that case, there's not as many buyers for the, the recycling, obviously lowering the price right now. I, I get that. And I think um, Ms. Sauerman had made that point very well yeah, two weeks ago. So, but the overall point is that um, the situation is largely market driven. Um, and we know that we spent 16 years building a good program and educating and investing. If market forces change in two or three years, where petroleum becomes more expensive and uh, cardboard commodity prices are up, would we find it difficult or easy to go back to dual stream to capitalize on that? Well, uh, let me just answer that this way. The RFP that we received had um, pricing structures, because we had, and the reason why we did an RFP was to get all these various prices to evaluate. All of those proposed numbers, whether it's twice we trash, once we trash, single stream versus dual stream become part, that's their proposal, that becomes part of the contract with them. There's also language that I put in the RFP that says the city may add or delete services during the life of the contract. So in the worst case scenario, if things aren't working out, we can make changes, we feel, based because all of those proposal numbers become part of the contract. So if we chose to go single stream and market forces changed within the terms of the contract, we could go back to being a dual stream? As far as I understand it, yes. Okay, and, 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 and that's good, that's good forethought, but in terms of educating the, the people who are putting stuff in the... Um, that would be the harder part. That would be the harder part, and okay. So, I'm, and, and I think part of my concern is that you've spent a long time building a great program, and uh, if you change it, if we change it, I don't know if we can ever go back. Understand, but I, I think the other thing to be with the markets um, by right now having just our cans and bottles, aluminum cans and glass, um, the glass industry is really hurting and there's not much value in it. By adding the cardboard and the paper that has more value, we should see, um, yes, we are getting more right now separate because it's clean paper and clean cardboard, but we we'll, you can't sell a single a stream or it's very difficult anymore of uh, just cans and bottles because that's the lowest um, revenue generator in the recycling world. 
So by keeping it together, we should be able to get um, a better pricing. The other thing is um, <coughs> our nationwide market industry sheets, it's the actual commodities that dictate the pricing of these uh, materials. Um, I mentioned last time we were in the Northeast Mid-Atlantic region, so there's pricing that comes through for each commodity, whether it's steel, tin, paper, cardboard, number two news, all kinds of grades of everything. The structure of the, for the revenue sharing idea will be based on the markets. So as the markets rise, what's the percentage going to the recycler? What's the percentage coming to the city of Allentown? That's what we'll be seeing and presenting. I understand. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. You're welcome, sir. Mm -hmm. Any other comments from my colleagues? Mr. Hendricks, I have. Ms. Sourman, <coughs> on a competitive basis, can you tell me the other vendors who participated? Were they all also in also, this RFP that yes. we're discussing tonight? Yes. Okay. Were they all equally uh, lower in cost based on single stream versus dual? If you know. Um, one minute, please. Three that were shortlisted, uh, it was less. All three of them. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Hendricks. Any other comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, we will now open it up to the public. And Attorney Fox, how about if you go last? Would that be okay? I mean, I'm not trying. You know. No, that's fine. We'll, we'll be here we'll, as long as we have to be here. Mr. Captain Trigger, go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon. Try your 733 North 11th Street. I got a couple questions. First of all, does anybody look at any videos or read anything about dual and double stream? Glass becomes useless, paper becomes useless for the most part. And there is uh, you know, a lot of a lot of communities, especially the West Coast, have been doing this much longer than we have, that are all basically looking at rethinking the whole process. Because the, the glass, the more it gets smashed up, it's useless in the process to you know to uh, to recycle it. And that's just a fact. There's like a, I've looked at it all day long. You can see it all over. I just find it always interesting how there's two out of my name. Every time the city proposes something, it's fine, whatever. But you always just look at all the bright little spots. You don't say, wow, this is an issue over here. This is an issue over here. Now, my other issue is it's waste management, period. I mean, please come to the North 11th Street. And sit there every single week for about a month and you will see that how pathetic it is our bins are laying in the street on top of cars up on the porch they've already thrown people's bins on the porches i have had my bin replaced three times who pays for that waste management or the city it's from them throwing it not to mention the other day i'm not sure what this was but only every other house got the garbage pick up and that was about the camera like that's the first time you see that's happened I called this in several times with no actual response what was done about it. You said yes, we'll look into it. Fantastic, you look into it. What was done? Did they get penalized for all these things? Or not? I'm thinking they probably don't. And also, you did help with one situation which is now going right back to the way it was. I complained that at you know, 4 o'clock in the morning, we have a very, our block works. The cars like disappear, they go to work. And at four o'clock in the morning, once a week, we get six waste management trucks at 11th and Green 
with 30 guys out there yelling, screaming, hooting, hollering, and cursing, and actually throwing their own trash on the ground out of their trucks. Now, I complained about this, and you guys took the talk to them, and it did get straightened up. We're back to that point again. They're once again meeting on 11th Street. And we right down the block, there's giant parking lots. And my one other thing is, it says here, uh, yard waste collection for once a week, that's uh, $438,000 a year. How's that picked up by a separate truck? You're under yes. the impression it is? It's not. But I didn't know that, because now, now I will, I'll, I'll start videotaping that. On our, when, we, when we throw out yard waste, we actually clean up our yard. And we throw out yard waste, and it's been thrown into the same truck already, repeatedly. Also, can the city just do that cheaper? Because yard waste is also what's up with Oxford, right? The drop off is drop. Yeah, but I mean, Ms. Jones, can the city do that cheaper than $438,000 a year? Seems like an awful lot of money for once a week. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you. Mr. Shoup, Mr. Good evening. Lou Shoup, 1130 Hamilton Street. I have a question about the actual um, single stream versus dual stream. Uh, like Mr. Heppentrager uh, said, when you mix newspaper with various substances, especially like empty beer bottles and all, the newspaper first off gets uh, ruined rather quickly. But I also want to mention that roughly 30 years ago, I used to work for the predecessor, uh, Grand Central Sanitation, and I used to work at their recycling center in Pinarjo. And I recall the arguments at the time that the color of the glass, for example, had to be separated because if you mix the glass together, white and green or white and brown, uh, that it would become unusable because of the dye that was used in the glass. Um, has that problem ever been solved? Um, yes, they've actually found applications and use for, there's about 10% of the glass that gets broken and mixed together. Um, one of it is the use in sand mounds in um, uh, well water installations in the homes the, that was approved by the state to do that. Uh, another one is that they're using it in sandblasting applications. So non-traditional forms of recycling is mostly the avenue for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shoup. This letter is wrong. I should get home. Um, I'm really here to argue against single stream recycling. Julio, your comments, Jeff, your questions, the comments. Single stream recycling turns paper into garbage, period. So the cans and bottles, yeah, there's a lot of liquid. So dual stream makes sense for a lot of reasons. And people, they, it saves money on collection going to single stream, and that's why waste management pioneered it, because it saves on collection costs. But if you just want to download something from the <coughs> Container Recycling Institute, Understanding Economic Environmental Impacts of Single Stream Collection Systems. Basically, I could read this to you, but there's arguments all throughout. It does not improve um, tonnages. In fact, there's a chart <coughs> and a study that the, um, the dual stream actually has a slight tiny advantage of a 7% diversion rate as opposed to a 6.8 diversion rate for single stream. Um, just over and over, they have found, whoever said, yes, the West Coast has pioneered recycling, and they have found that single stream is not working. It may save on collection costs, but if you actually care about recycling the paper, then it doesn't work. So, um, by the way, we started recycling paper in 1993. That's when we started the, in 1990 was the cans and bottles. Um, <clears throat> so the biggest argument is that it contaminates the paper, turning it into garbage. We have a good system. We have a local vendor. We are blessed to have Liberty Recycling in town to take our paper. We don't even have to drive it up to Northampton where the cans and bottles goes. It goes right to Liberty Recycling, which is a business, employing people in our own city. Um, not to say that Liberty would necessarily get it the next time, but they've had it for a long time because they have the economies of scale. They're right here. Um, Dave Keschel, the owner, is back there. I hope he comes up here and tells you why you should do dual stream. He knows about paper markets. Um, I mean, recycling isn't perfect, and this, this bureau does a fantastic job. I mean, I left 
2006, so I've been out of this for a long time, and they have continued to do a great job. This is a mistake. Going to single stream is a mistake. Um, just download and look at the studies that are quoted in this. I, there's so many things on the internet about that are <coughs> legitimate questions, and people are asking them, but those, that's the bottom line. I don't want to stand here and read things to you that you can read. <clears throat> but just the idea that they're charging $25 a ton at Green Star for single stream recycling tells you it costs an average of $73 a ton to process single stream. Um, people, the biggest question people ask, do things really get recycled? And the answer is yes, <coughs> they do, but the markets are terrible. They've never recovered from 2008 from the crash. And China stopped buying so many recyclables. So anyway, I just want <coughs> you to reject the single stream, go with common sense, and maintain the dual stream. Because going back, as Mr. Glazer pointed out, is probably impossible. You cannot re-educate people to unmix them. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Mr. Keschel, welcome. Thank you. David Keschel, I live at uh, 119 West Wabash, Allentown. My business is Liberty Recycling on 3rd Street. When I was here two weeks ago, I brought you papers from Ford Magazine, The Morning Call. 25% of everything picked up at your house is landfill with single stream. 40% of the glass is landfill. Where's the recycling? going out the window. Dual stream is the way to do it. Yes, markets are depressed. Hopefully they will turn around. You educated your people on dual stream. I think you should keep the people on dual stream. If I get the contract again, all well and good. If I don't, I still say we should dual stream. Thank you. Thank you, special. Anyone else? I know Attorney Fox wants to speak. Anyone else about Mr. Mr. Hunter? Welcome. Thank you. Ryan Hunter, CIU President. I believe I talked before about um, the difficulties with going uh, dual stream or single stream. Single stream. Yeah, I've seen it dumped every day at waste management up there in Northampton. I go up there every day to the little today of combing, which is your dual stream system that you have now. The most cleanest system you can have. Because what they do is they don't have a sort company. They process it right away. It gets processed on a separate belt than does single stream. Single stream has to be sorted. Everything has to be sorted by hand. Pickers go up there, pick everything off. Garbage, so forth. Um, I guess some of my questions are, what is our loss in revenue going to be when we include all the paper and cardboard into the single stream system? Now markets are down. Everybody touched on how it's market driven. <clears throat> Even myself, I touched on how it was market driven before. And Mr. Glazier, you know, had the, the courtesy of asking some critical questions before on it. Um, but what we weren't shown was, what is the loss going to be? All right, it's down now. What happens in these five years of this contract, year two or three, and these markets go back up? And they say it's all great, you know, we can we can change the program around, but how do we re-educate everybody again to separate? We have it all clean now. We've had it clean for years. So I think it requires a lot more thinking than just saying it's great to go to single stream and that's the answer to all of our problems here. Um, I think it's foolish to erect a system that is a pristine system that we have in place. I just encourage you to think about it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hunter. <coughs> this is Mr. Glenn Hunsinger. Yeah. Welcome, sir. You get two for the price of one. That's OK, yeah. anytime. <laughs> uh, I guess I was looking at the cost of this so-called $500,000. But you know, I mean, I'm in favor of dual stream. I, don't get me wrong, this, you have to do this. You can't go to single stream after educating everybody to, to have two bins out there. <coughs> I, I'm looking at the numbers. I mean, 
I think one of the, I think uh, Fred said last week we had 33,400 pickups or something like that. Is that, is that the number? Maybe it was Residential, 36,675. So we, if we, can we multiply that by what, 375? We're talking what, 15 million maybe? Uh, what is that number, that's the total number? Anyway, it's more than nine or 10 million. Now you look at why the administration has to tap on this fund every year. They tap from that fund every year. We can get four and a half million to take out of that fund. I mean, if you're gonna go all with these savings, then we should have a reduction in prices. If you're gonna go that way, take the, we should be down to maybe $350. I mean, if you're gonna go and ruin this system the way it is now, basically go back to go to single stream, you right now you have maybe Tell me where the other four or five million dollars is every year, over and above. What our true cost is for what our contract was in 14 and in 15. Look at those numbers. You people are smart enough. You know where the money goes. Comes back up to the general fund and goes someplace else. That's the only way he can balance the budget for one year in 16. Next year you have the same problem unless you double the EIT again, you have to, where's the money? Think it over. You gotta stay dual stream. We're gonna pay for it. We paid our dues for years. You gotta stay with dual stream. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anyone else before we get nominated? Mr. Arsman, come up. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, sir. When I was a city council, we had a, an ordinance that we referred to, and I don't have it with me. Is there any way you could look under, under the codified ordinance of the city? You just have a, you just have a way to get under the codified on awarding contracts on the solid waste. Are we following the city ordinance when it comes to awarding a solid waste contract? It would be under the codified ordinance, Michael. That would be. It says awarding of contracts. Are we following it? In other words, there's an ordinance that says how we should award the city contracts, so how waste contracts. Right. So it's in the codified. Maybe one of you guys can pull it up. Thank you. Anyone else uh, concerning, basically, we've been talking about a single stream, uh, dual stream. Seeing no one else for that discussion, Attorney Fox, welcome. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. If it please counsel, my name's William Fox. I'm the general oh, counsel. Miss, Mr. Hamlin, um, I'm gonna give Attorney Fox basically the, no, the time he needs. I, I appreciate I, I think that. that's fair. Uh, I'm general counsel for J.P. Mascaro and Sons, uh, a corporate resident and taxpayer of the city of Allentown with an operating division at 315 Basin Street. Um, the purpose of my talking tonight is to ask City Council to reject the contract award recommendation made by the City Administration and to rebid this contract, not as an RFP, which I believe was improperly done here, but as a fixed bid in excess of $40,000, which under the City Administrative Code must be awarded to the lowest responsible bidder based on common bid specifications that apply to all of the bidders. Uh, I've had correspondence with council president and shared it with the council members raising my concerns, but I just want to touch upon a few of them here. Um, we all know and had vague ref references to public official number three and this new guy today that I just heard of that uh, uh, pled guilty or got indicted and pled guilty. There's been problems in this city with contract procurement and award. And those problems are not pointed at city council. Those problems are really directed at the city administration. This RFP was drafted 
by a consultant in Virginia many, many months ago before Mr. Hartzell's got involved. Your own solicitor acknowledged, never even reviewed the thing before the, at least at the last meeting that I believe Ms. Wilde acknowledged to me, she had never seen it, wasn't part of it, uh, before it went out to the public. What has been important, what is extremely important in all municipal contracts, <laughs> but particularly today in the city of Allentown, is following the appropriate and mandated bidding processes and transparency in the process. And I suggest to you that in this process, through the actions of the city administration, an illegal process was used, an RFP process, and there has been absolutely no transparency. You seven councilmen, the elected officials of this city, don't even know what the numbers were. I find that unbelievable, that you don't know what the bid numbers were. It's one thing, if I don't know, even and I think the law allows me to vote, but if you don't know, it is troubling. How are you doing that? I, I just, I heard, I, 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 I thought I heard someone to say that out there. If I'm wrong, I apologize. No, I, I'm just saying, give me, give me a fact, that you, what you say, back up your fact. What I thought fact? I heard someone up here tonight acknowledge that they hadn't seen them yet. We now, cannot, we cannot acknowledge, them. as well, okay. we cannot acknowledge the other numbers until the contract is, or the proposal is actually awarded. That doesn't negate the fact that we as council members have seen them. Okay. Let me, let me back up and say this then. Okay. I also heard up here someone say tonight that if it was a bid process, the numbers are read out and publicly at the bid. This should have been a bid process. You look at what your resolution is here. It says it's for, you have three choices. Award of a contract in excess of 40,000, there's no X on that. Award of a contract where there's 10% more increase on a contract that was 40,000 or more, no X on that. Contract for the engagement of professional services. That's what they're calling this. It's not that. Professional services are engineers, lawyers, consultants, architects, landscape architects. This is a labor and equipment contract. Every contract in this city's history has been awarded by competitive bid. You look at your own administrative code, which deals with professional contracts, professional service contracts. Professional service contracts under section 130.16 of the City Administrative Code can be awarded pursuant to an RFP process. And the RFP process is typically where you ask for proposals, you get proposals, and then you sit down and you negotiate a final a contract award. And it's referencing awards requests for, for professional consulting services. That's what they're talking about here when it says you can use an RFP. Request for <coughs> professional consulting services. If you want a lawyer, you don't have to go into the lowest responsible bid. You ask for, if you, want, if you want an architect, if you want an engineer, those are professional consulting services. The guys on the back of the truck picking up the tra trash are not professional consultants. The driver is not a professional consultant. One's called a picker, one's called a driver. This is not a professional consulting contract. And whoever says it is, is wrong. They're flat out wrong. And once you conclude it's not a professional service contract, then you have to go back to the other portion of the city code, which says contracts for services or construction projects in excess of $40,000 have to be awarded to the lowest responsible bidder. And the law in this area, and I've been doing it for 30 years, is fixed and it's legend. There has to be common specifications applicable to all bidders. You can't say to the bidder, well, throw in some extra stuff you might think is valuable. 
You can't do that on a fixed bid. You have to ask what you want, and the bidder has to bid on what you ask. This contract, I don't know who this consultant GBB is. I don't know if that I know the solicitors from what I heard had nothing to do with <coughs> but he's feeding you a line of BS. This is not an RFP. It should have never been an RFP. When I first raised that issue in my letter of September 29th, before the bids were open, I said, you can't have an RFP. You need to cancel this RFP and rebid it and put it out as a bid. I said, you can't have a bid for a trash contract where you can have negotiations. And council person, uh, I can hold this in. You asked whether there's anything in the original specifications about negotiations. Section 3.3, the city may elect it in sole and absolute discretion to award a contract based on the initial proposals or to open negotiations. And it goes on and on. It says the final award's going to be based upon the proposal and the negotiations. In an RFP process, that's why you don't reveal the numbers. Because an RFP process allows for negotiations, so you have to keep the numbers secret so you guys could do your best to drive our prices down. A bid process, that's not the game. The bid process, you put your number down, and that's your number. Well, after I complained, they took that, all that language out, and they gave an addendum. And the addendum said, the number you put in is fixed and firm and cannot be changed or modified. No changing numbers, no negotiations. That didn't correct the problem. Because the whole world who received the advertisement for this contract thought and, and chose to look at the specifications, said it's going to be a negotiation RFP process. I'm not getting involved in that, heads of bidder. Everyone who's in this industry knows trash contracts are bid by fixed bids. There could be a group of proposers out there that never even bid on this thing or considered bidding on it because they didn't want to get involved in a process they knew was improper or was not following the law. One of the biggest companies in the world decided not to bid this contract, handed something into the city saying we're not bidding it. Did anyone, does anyone know why? I tried to ask. I still haven't been able to get the numbers even though I put a right to know request in. They want another 30 days to look at it. Uh, but this is, ladies and gentlemen, a bid. You can't dress it up. If it looks like a pig, it squeals like a pig, it's a pig. If it looks like a bid, it's a bid. And that's what this is. It's a bid. Whoever put this down as a professional services contract, you know, just really does not know what they're doing. And once you conclude it's not a professional service contract, you have to conclude that it's a bid, and you have to conclude that they used the entire wrong process. And then furthermore, you have to conclude, if this was a bid, those numbers should have been disclosed and read publicly when the bids were open. <clears throat> there's so much lack of transparency here. There's so much wrong with this process. And by the way, these people are doing a good job. Twice, twice a week is good, I believe. Recycling, whether it's single stream or dual stream, is good. I'm not complaining about what the services they want. It's the process here. Waste management, reputable company. Biggest in the world. Not complaining about waste management. But if you use the process that's tainted and flawed, then you can't award a contract. This thing is so open to litigation that it's not even funny. You need to nip it in the bud now. You really need to, you, this is a contract that's not gonna go into effect until June. We're in December, we're seven months away. Somebody needs to put out a bid specification with common specifications, common things <coughs> uh, to all the bidders. If you want a recycle bank, tell the bidders you want a recycle bank. If you want A, B, and C, tell the bidders you want A, B, and C. You can't say to a bidder on a bid contract, you propose what you're offering, we'll decide if it's good. 
That's not how bid competitive bids work. And I know a lot of people have put a lot of work into this process. But I think, and I don't know, and I don't know if you guys know, there was someone that asked questions, well, is this part of the old administration? I, I don't know, but I think someone should check, is this RFP process that was solicited by this Virginia company? part of the old process many, many months ago that is giving everyone so much concern. I think it may turn out to have been because your lawyers didn't look at it or review it before it was issued. Uh, so that leads me to conclude that the consultant drafted it with some recommendations or probably in, input from department people. But that consultant this is Mark. It, it, it's not a professional service contract, and it, it's a service contract that needs to be awarded uh, by competitive bid. Really, the, the status of what we have here now, I believe we have an improper and illegal RFP process that was used, process that was used where a competitive bid process should have been used. This is either a 50 or $90 million contract. This is a huge contract. And it needs to be done right. And it needs to be done with complete transparency. And it needs to be done by <coughs> the proper procedures under your administrative code. And it need not be done as a professional consulting contract. If any one of you up there can sit there and tell me with a straight face that this is a professional consulting contract, I'd love to hear the rationale, because it isn't. Trash is a labor and equipment contract. You know, is the plumber a professional service contract? Is the HVAC man a professional service contract? No, they're not. Everyone knows it. You don't need, you don't need to go to law school or the Wharton school. So I think you have the advantage of being able to correct the problems here. And I think you should take that advantage and not endorse a process, because that's what you're doing here to improve this. You're endorsing a process that is severely flawed and lacks any transparency. And I would urge you to not approve the contract and send a recommendation back to city administration that they redo the bid specifications as a competitive bid rather than an RFP. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Fox. Mr. President, I have a brief question for Mr. Fox. Yes, go ahead. Uh, I'm not trying to be wise, sir. I, can I assume that even if you had been the lowest, if you had won the contract, you'd be up here making the exact same points? Yeah. No, no, probably not, but someone else. Thank God. That's what I thought, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> no, this, this, no, this, no, 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 Mr. Fox, we wait, get wait, it. Wait, wait, Mr. Fox, we get it. We understand completely. No, no, you don't get it. No, we I, get it. I, 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 me, as an individual company, <laughs> I'm not impacted by the flaws. But the public as a whole is. And it's not your duty to protect me or any bidder. It's your duty to protect the process and the legalities of the process. I'm not asking for protection. I'm a big boy. I can protect myself. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, okay. Oh, yes, sir. You want to, you want to come up? Yes, sir. Welcome. Mr. President, members of the council, my name is Sam Augustine. I'm director of sales with uh, J.P. Mascaro and Sons. Sam Augustine. Sam Augustine with J.P. Mascaro and Sons. I've been with um, uh, Mascaro for a similar amount of time, over 30 years. Uh, I handle all the municipal bidding and uh, uh, commercial bidding, industrial industrial services for the company. I can tell you, um, as an industry professional, I've probably done over 2,500 to 3,000 municipal bids, state bids. Just to give you an idea, out of those 3,000 state bids, similar to the city of Allentown, all of them are bids that are opened up uh, per the, whether it's the municipal code or the state code, it's opened up, the numbers are read, and it's given to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder, okay? 
And that, that's whether it's the city of Carbondale, the city of Pot, Pottsville, the city of Hazleton, uh, any, any city in the Commonwealth has to bid per, uh, per the public bidding process, which, which puts specs together where you have to have the requisite uh, articles in the specification, such as the, the performance bond, the consent assurity, financial condition, experience, et cetera, that pre-qualifies the bidder before the bid is open. You cannot, in a, in a service such as this, as Mr. Fox has pointed out, but more so, in, in, the, in the real world, you cannot call this professional services contract. A, a trash contract has to be opened up, and it's done, it's done so in every other municipality that I know of in the Commonwealth that I've been associated with. When this bid originally came out, I want you to know that, there were, that immediately I went to Mr. Fox and discussed the situation with him that I had never seen anything like this in a municipality in, in Pennsylvania, whether it's a municipality that has 500 homes or a municipality that has 35,000 homes. So it's very improper what's, a, what's occurred here. Lastly, I'll point out that there were so many bid items in the bid, so many bid items in the bid, that it was very, very confusing to, to, to bid on what we did here and therefore you had to take in so many considerations to try to determine you know, whether you were going to be picked for this or that or whatever. So I don't even think that this was a fair bid in terms of trying to understand what, it, what is in the bid specifications. And it was really, and I, I hate to say this, this bid was meant for your current bidder. I mean your current hauler. That's who this bid was meant for. Finally, I'm running out of time, but I will tell you this. I sit on the Limerick Zoning uh, Board, a judicial board, all right? We have a solicitor. And I will tell you, you I'm sure some of you are business people. Obviously, I'm a business person, I, but I sit on the other side. And I want you to take this to heart, because I mean it from my heart. And I don't care if you, Mr. Mr. Glazier brought out whether we were the low bidder or not. It doesn't matter. What, what, what heard, you've heard tonight and what is going on to surround this, and that's all I'm going to mention about that. If I was sitting on your side of the table and somebody brought the concerns on a $90 million contract, if they brought those kind of concerns and I was on your side of the table trying to make a decision on what you've heard tonight, there'd be no way that I would award this contract, okay, based on how this contract was put, or how this proposal was put together, how it was let, and it's not legal. I know it's not legal, and I'm not an attorney. I can tell you it's not legal, okay? I'm not an attorney. Uh, Mr. Mr. Attorney. Mr. 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 Finish up your statement. Okay, and, and, you know, basically, you know, I, please take that into consideration. And again, you have plenty of time for six months before you would have to you have to start a new contract. That's plenty of time to rebid, put the specifications out as properly, uh, properly, and bring in the most responsible and responsive bidder. Thank you, Mr. Augustine. While you're there, I have a question. Sure. You make you make a very serious accusation. I'm not making any. Accusation. Yes, you did. No, I did. About one minute ago, Go ahead. you Tell said me. you made the accusation that. This basically RFP, whatever it's called, RFP. But that's what it's called, RFP. Yes. Whatever you're saying, it's an RFP. Yes. Whether we're right, wrong, or indifferent, it's yes. an RFP. It's an RFP. You said this was tailored to the current hauler. Yes, and, I, and I'll explain why. If you can give me a chance, I'll say. You explain. Why. You explain. Got one minute to explain why. I'm going to. I'm gonna, uh, thanks for giving me a minute. There were so many alternates in this bid. There were probably 40 to 50 alternates in this bid unheard of in any bid I've ever done that this was this many alternates, okay? That you could pick and choose when it, whatever alternate you want, the city could pick any alternate it wanted, picked and choose. So that in an RFP, you are free to pick and choose any alternate and also negotiate with the bidder as to what alternate. One alternate, just Mr. President, listen to this. One alternate is that you would use toters in one section of the city and not use toters in another section of the city. How's that possible? It didn't say how many toters. It didn't say whether, it didn't say completely <coughs> you buy the toters. There were so many.
problems with this bid. You, and believe me, you don't have to. It, it's, I'm, I'm up here re representing my company, okay? But trust me when I tell you, this bid was so irregular that I don't understand how anybody could award this bid. I mean that. I mean that. Okay. Okay. I mean that. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. I got you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Mr. President. All right. Let, let me. Let me. Um, what, are, you, are you going to talk? We're going. What are we? What are you going to talk about? We're going to talk about what decision we should make. Well, hold on. I got. I got. I got. I got. I want to say something. Okay. Okay. I mean, J.P. Mascaro, your argument is the process. Well, that's why you have lawyers. You, you want to go through litigation, you go through lit litigation. <clears throat> I, feel, I, I, feel, I, I feel that the, the process, I feel comfortable with the process. Sometimes I make mistakes. I haven't made many lately though. It's a joke. But anyway, I, I'm, and, and we'll get to that. We'll, 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 get, we'll get to that. I, I, I'm, I hear my fellow people out there, my, my residents, I'm talking about single stream, double stream. I'm listening to them because I, 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 I read a little bit about it and I, I read more about it, but I don't know. Uh, the, the, the process is the process is the process, but Mr. Greedy, I'm done yakking. I have a dinner and <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. No, you, you go ahead, Mr. Greedy. But in light of what I heard so far and my own sentiment about, about um, the whole process and you know working in the field and, and of, 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 having to issue and, and interview people, uh, professional services, and, and also in, in uh, you know, straightforward uh, competitive fixed bidding uh, project, uh, projects. Um, and in addition to the whole discussion of single uh, versus dual stream, um, I, let, me, let me just say before I say what I'm gonna say is that I, I do believe, uh, Mr. Fox and, and uh, Mr. Augustine, that if you are one, the RFP, you will not be here talking. Mm -hmm. I believe that, from RFP. I know. Okay. So your point is actually moved to me in that in that mm -hmm. in that rationale. But saying what I saying in, in light of what has been said so far, in light of what I feel, in light of my own. Um, experience on this and going through two, two at least two uh, different um, uh, proposals for um, the, the, the trash holding of the city. Um, I, and also in addition to, to what I said earlier in regards to the questions of what's going to happen to our um, recycling I feel that we should table this at this point, look into perhaps um, having the attorney review this proposal and, and um, provide us a recommendation, a recommendation of her, uh, or, uh, or, like her or, or, or if it is a consultant, I, I'm amenable to that too, of what is, how it should, we should proceed. And, uh, Table it within time because I know part of the part of the, the problem I feel a little bit uncomfortable tabling, but I think I, and that's what I'm going to suggest anyway, is that there is an issue of timing here, and I wanted to get that issue of timing when we send out the bills of these or the uh, trash. Can we still send the full bill with the uh, taxes? Because I asked that question before, and they, they said to me the uh, the uh, the answer that I got primarily was. Uh, well, we have to approve this now because the tax bill for the trash goes out with the city tax in January, and that will create a problem. And I'm not sure what the rationale for that <coughs> is. Can we continue with this? I mean, the, 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 the country is not over until June, right? Until June of next year. We're, 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 staying, we're staying at 375. Correct. We're staying at 375. Well, there's not going to be any difference. So on the, 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 this, won't, this won't alter the, the process. Okay. Well, well, right. As far as with what we proposed, if you go, if you stay with dual stream, there's a $600,000 difference. And that's in the budget now for next year? No, no, no the budget okay. is not okay. proposed. Okay. 
So that is the man. And, and, and you know, and, uh, we're gonna look into it. Is it the right decision to make? And I want to table so we can look into that a little further as well. And also look into this whole issue of the process. But one, one clarification, the, the 375 stays at 375. That's what we're proposing. We propose 375, 375, 375. So there won't be any, there won't be any, any problem with tabling, really. Mr. Powell, that's based on single string. Oh, that's, based on single that's based on single stream, and, uh, and we heard it was sixteen dollars more per household if we would go to double stream. Double stream, sixteen times. Mr. Anshin gave me a number here: thirty-six thousand six hundred seventy-five households. Yes. Times sixteen. Okay. But, you know, the, the issue is. Point of information. Is there a motion to table? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if there is, there can't be any more discussion. Yeah, no. okay. You, you make that motion, sir? I made the motion that we table it, yes. Uh, the only thing I was trying to say is yeah. if you have an <coughs> we can table it. Yeah. Um, because I don't want to table it, in, in, you know. Till Definitely. No, we understand that. We have, we have a little time. We have some time. So the motion has been made by Mr. Greedy to table uh, resolution. 73. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Um, Mr. Hamlin, or I should ask the solicitor this, by common consent, or do we, should we do a roll call? Which roll call? I'd rather do a roll call, yeah. Okay, so a motion has been made by Mr. Garidi, and it's been seconded by Ms. Eichelwald to second this. A yes would be in agreement, a no would be in disagreement. So Mr. Hamlin, call the vote. Okay, motion to uh, table resolution 73. Mr. Glazier. Yes. Mr. Green. Yes. Mr. Hedrick. Yes. Ms. Mota. Yes. Mr. Davis. No. Mr. Yes. 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 Six to one. Okay. Um, this is um, this is tabled until obviously further discussions. We'll be in contact with public works administration will be contact with us and we'll be in contact with the solicitor's office as far as the, the process. Thank you, meetings adjourned.